So I think it's time to call this meeting to order. It is, uh, let's see, 7.36 on uh, August 11th. And I wanna bring this meeting of the RTM to order. And I would ask the town clerk if she would have the roll call. Yeah, if I had my papers, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be terrific. That'd be terrific. But he moved my papers. Uh, well, I let somebody else do a meeting and everything got changed. So I will do it, do it the old fashioned way. Because I can, I can read them if you want to just check them off. I can do it from the... No, I, I've got it in front of me. So here we go. So um, Adams. Here. Bailey. Here. Baker. Here. Casper. Here. Casari. Here. Chase. Here. Crockett Hubbard. Here. Dean Shinbrot. Here. Fitzgerald. Here. Blacks. Fortner. Here. Foster. Rickman. David Gothier. Did I hear someone? I, I thought I did. Did I hear? Oh, there's Flax. Flax is here. Flax is here. Uh, Sorry yeah. about that. That's okay. David Gothier. Lauren Gothier. Jim Gustafson. Here. Sue Hayline. Here. Autumn Henscom. Here. Hens here. Jones. Bruce Jones. Roseanne Kotowski. Roscoe Merritt. Sheila Perry. Uh, Kristen Powers. Here. John Powers. Here. Emily Ray. Kate Richards. Here. Jason Rusk. Here. Bill Rusk. Here. Alice Darkley. Here. Dane Stevenson. Here. Ian Thomas. Here. Beverly Washington. Here. Harry Watson. He's here, I saw him. Gary Wells. Here. Michael Whitehouse. Here. Michael Whitney. Here. Okay, and Sima Evan. Here. And uh, Bruce Jones is having problems with the internet. <laughs> uh, I'll just tell him to restart his computer. <laughs> All right. So, well, do we have a quorum? What was that number? I didn't. I didn't count it. One, two, three. You four. missed. You you missed some of us, Betsy. You missed some of us. Oh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 26, 27. I have 27, and who did I miss? Representative I'm sorry, one at a time. Up. That's 28. And Jacome. And Jacome, okay. Thank you. That's 29. <laughs> Maybe more. Right. We do have a quorum. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a real paper. Okay. All right. So uh, the first moment, um, the first uh, rather item on our agenda, it will be a moment of silence. I just want to preface this and say that I really had hoped that we could be together in person um, for meetings uh, since uh, we have a vaccine, but it appears that we are now under the sway of a Delta variant. And uh, because some folks haven't gotten in the country, haven't gotten the vaccine. Uh, we are at a very high point of infectivity in our town and in our, um, in our uh, county uh, and in Connecticut. So I, I just hope, you know, that we can all think about <laughs> this in our moment of silence, reach thinking about the folks who are, you know, right now suffering with COVID, who are caregiving for those with COVID and those families who've lost loved ones because of it. So let us have a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. Uh, Representative Casper, would you lead us in the pledge? Please. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice. Thank you. That was outstanding. All right. Um, the next item is we have two uh, minutes. We have the minutes from our annual budget meeting, which ended in May to approve, and also uh, the minutes from our last meeting, which was held on June 9th. Um, could I get a motion to approve the annual budget meeting minutes, please? Motion to approve, Adams. Bailey, second. second. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve the annual 2022, FY 2022 annual budget meeting minutes made by Rep. Adams and seconded by Representative Bailey. Is there any discussion of those minutes? My hand is raised. Thank you, uh, Representative Rusk. Under roll call, it says um, Jay Rusk was absent and that Jay Rusk arrived at 7.49. I don't remember which one of us that, that was, but is there anything that can correct that? Oh, sure, I can correct that. I, I have everything at my office, all of the, uh, the notes. So I'll, okay. I'll make it. Um, I'll make sure that it's either Jason or Jill. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other um, items that we need to corrections for those minutes of the annual budget meeting for FY 2022? All right. Seeing none, we do have a motion on the floor from Representative Adams, which has been seconded by Representative Bailey to approve those minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, those minutes are approved. Next item are the June 9th minutes of our uh, regular meeting. Can I get a motion to approve those? Bailey, so make a motion. Representative Bailey made a motion to approve. Was that Representative uh, Washington? Yes. Bailey, uh, Bailey and Washington and Rusk. I don't know which one you want to take. I, I heard Bailey and Washington. Sorry about that. Um, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes of our June 9th meeting. Uh, made by Representative Bailey and seconded by Representative Washington. Uh, is there any discussion or changes to be made to those minutes? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any uh, abstentions? All right, seeing none, those that motion passes. I see, um, uh, um, Madam Clerk, a request uh, to make um, Sean a co-host, if that's possible. Let me see, where is he? Oh, he's probably back in the front here, waiting a second. Um, GMTV. I'm looking for him, but uh, there's so many people up here. Um, hmm. Yes. Okay. Please co host. All right. Thank you. So the next item on our agenda is citizens' petitions. And this is the portion of the of the RTM agenda where the RTM welcomes comments from citizens. Presentation should be limited to four minutes or less, and citizens should submit writ written comments if possible. Presentation should be limited to matters pertinent to Broughton and the moderator or members through the moderator can ask questions, but only in order to clarify the speaker's presentation. Responses may be given by myself or the town manager who's not with us tonight, and citizens should state their name and address for the record. I don't believe that there's anyone here to speak, but let me ask if there is. Eugenia is here. Huh. Ms. Yeah. Miyagra, would you like to speak? Yes, I would. Please, you have the floor. Thank you. 
Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Eugenia Villagra and I live at 76 Riverview Avenue in Groton. I am here tonight representing Groton Conservation Advocates to encourage you to support the purchase and sale agreement, which will allow the acquisition of the Watrous or Wolfbrook property to go forward. I hope you have all seen and read our fundraising brochure sent out last Friday. We are very excited about this property. For 30 years, this property has been highly ranked for protection by both the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection and by the Towns Conservation Commission because of its extraordinary ecological, environmental, and historical cultural values. One of the largest vernal pools in New England, part of a series of five vernal pools on the property, is but one outstanding feature. A large pond is situated near the entrance path off Noank Ledger Road. Eccleston Brook and several other streams run throughout the property supporting the adjacent wetlands, the most environmentally productive ecosystem of all. At least 32% of the property is comprised of wetlands, brooks, and the pond. The unfragmented forest provides ideal nesting habitat for many species of birds in decline in Connecticut. Wood turtles and box turtles, both Connecticut species of special concern, have been seen on the property. Just one tall oak tree can host up to 500 species. These trees give us oxygen, store carbon, stabilize the soil, and provide shelter and food to local and transient wildlife. Trees absorb hundreds of gallons of water, preventing flooding in abutting neighborhoods. They reduce wind speeds, they cool the air as they lose moisture, and they reflect heat upwards from their leaves. It is estimated that trees can reduce the temperature in an urban area by up to 12 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And because the property is located between several protected areas in Groton, Pequot Woods, the Sheep Farm, and Candlewood Hill, it will add another vital link to Groton's Central Greenway. Now more than ever, it is important to protect land for a more sustainable Groton. In today's world of climate change and species extinctions, taking action to protect this extraordinary property is exactly what we need to be doing. After all, nature gives us life. Every breath of air we breathe, every drop of water we drink, and every bite of food we eat all comes from nature. By protecting land, we keep nature and ourselves safe. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lagra, for that. Any um, follow-up questions from anyone? All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. I don't see anyone else, but if, is there anyone else who wishes to speak at this time? All right. Now we come into this reception of communications, and I did want to note that I did receive communications from Representative Foster, Puccio, and Ray that they would not be able to be with us tonight. And I did also receive a letter um, from um, sorry, Mr. Richard Fitzgerald, which he asked to be read into the record and included a, as part of the record of this meeting. And so I will read it. Um, so this was sent, uh, or at least I received it by email on June 9th, I believe, or I think it was June, maybe it was June, June 29th, excuse me. Um, and he said, congratulations to the Groton Planning Department and town manager. And this is from Richard Fitzgerald, 8 Benjamin Road in Mystic. Mystic Coastal Access is 70% to 80% and completely inaccessible from this point on into the future. The results of their resolution on four. 6 2021 for the Mystic Coastal Access for replacement missing signage with a $40,000 budget will be that this Mystic Coastal Access is currently 80% inaccessible. The town planning department will ensure that Mystic Coastal Access will be 70% completely inaccessible with fancy signage on the other 30%, not the state of Connecticut approved standard signage. Please remember this Mystic Coastal Access was paid for, accepted, and approved for use by the state of Connecticut and is still on state maps with references in 1990 and 91. Also note, tours of the Mystic Coastal Access were given by Mark Offinger on a completely signed Mystic Coastal Access initially and a few years after its construction. 
In 2018, the town of Groton came up with a new Mystic Coastal Access Master Plan. This plan is 50% wrong and has non-standard signage. This is where the plan is wrong. It shows it going down Water Street from Mystic Art Center and then down Route 1 to the bridge, which is highly commercial streets away from any water or coast. The signage is very elaborate and not the state standard coastal access. All of the 1990 Mystic Coastal Access from the Mystic Art Center to Fort Rachel Marina has been eliminated. There is no state approved plan and they probably never notified it the existence. This is a diversion to the state approved in 1990 um, Mystic Coastal Access accepted plan issued by the town. Included is the main missing parts of the access of 1990 and 91, which will never be re-signed. Current condition, paths around the Mystic Art Museum from parking lot to the powerhouse condos, where it goes to the powerhouse property, there is no signage. The powerhouse condo two are at the powerhouse condo, condos forward and aft at the covered alcove. Also now at powerhouse condos forward and aft, there are two no trespassing signs also, just within the last two months, a third no trespassing sign was installed on the path 10 feet from the water and building. In accordance with the plan of 1991, it states passage should be allowed from Mystic Art Museum to Randall Wharf. The coastal, Connecticut Coastal Access Guide dated July 2001. Mark Offinger also stated three times during um, November 2016 and January 2017 meetings at the town hall, he took walking tours through there in the coastal access signs were in place. In the Fort Rachel Marina where trails turn left along railroad track going forward uh, where the main entrance to the Mystic River by is protected by fencing from the railroad tracks, this missing signage um, will be lost and gone forever to the citizens of Broughton. So um, I think we've received a few of letters from Mr. Fitzgerald notifying us about the signage and I sure, surely hope it will be resolved. Uh, Mr. Burt's not here to comment on that right now, um, but if anyone has any updates on that, uh, that would be great to hear at some point. Um, are there any other communications that anyone else has received? Uh, everybody received the thank you from Safe Futures. Yes, we received many um, thank yous from the out outside agencies that were funded in our FY 2022 budget. Any other correspondence or communication? All right, seeing none, we do have the report of the manager. Uh, Mr. Bird is out of town tonight and he did email us a financial report and a monthly briefing. Um, and I believe that we have a guest tonight. Um, unfortunately, the town council did not um, vote on um, the Legislative Health District appropriation um, from the ARPA funds until last night. So it did not go through committee. And so at this point, uh, what will need to happen if we are to approve this um, resolution that I believe was emailed to everyone uh, is that we will um, have to suspend the rules. So um, I- As you know, you have 32 members. We have 32 members now. Yes, uh, Representative Jones came. Thank you for letting me know. So just so that we're um, all on the same page, um, to suspending members. the rule is two thirds, uh, which oh. means we'll need to have 22 uh, members voting in favor. It's a non-debatable motion. Um, and uh, at this point, I would entertain uh, a motion to suspend the rule so we can discuss this item. So moved, White House. Second, Chase. All right. Um, thank you. We have a motion to spend the rules made by Representative Whitehouse and seconded by Representative Chase. All in favor of that? I think we're going to need a um, to have a roll call vote if possible. Madam sure. moderator, I'm sorry to yes. interrupt, um, but point of order, I believe it is two thirds of your total body and no, not two thirds of those present. It is two thirds of just those present? Correct. Okay, thank you. You want to, shall I start with a roll call? I think that will be the easiest way to I, determine. I agree. Thank you. 
I agree. Okay, yes or no, uh, or abstain, Adams? Yeah. Uh, Bailey? Yes. Baker? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Casper? Yes. Cassieri? Yes. Chase? Yes. Pop? Yes. Crockett Hubbard? Yes. Dean Shinbrot? Yes. Fitzgerald? Yes. Lax? No. Um, Fortner? Yes. Gustafson? Uh, Abstain. Uh, Hanscom? Oops, Hainline? Yes. Hanscom? Yes. Jacom? Yes. Jones? Yes. Perry? She's not here. Nope. Powers? Kristen? Yes. Sean Powers? Yes. Um, Richards? Yes. Jason Rusk? Yes. Jill Rusk? Yes. Starkley? Yes. Uh, Stevenson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Washington? No. Watson? Yes. Wells? Yes. White House? Yes. Whitney? Representative Whit Whitney? Hmm. Did we lose him? Okay. Um, and Evan? Yes. All right. That's 28 yes, two no, one abstention. Thank you. That, that motion to suspend the rules passes. Uh, and so I believe we all got a spreadsheet from um, Legislative Health from Mr. Mansfield, as well as a, the resolution that was passed. And um, this is basically a request for the American Res Rescue Plans Act funds. Uh, the town is in receipt of um, half of that funding at this point. And basically Legislative Health District uh, states they've been at the forefront in contending with COVID-19. With the recent increase in cases due to COVID-19 Delta variant, Legislate is in need of funding to better address the issues surrounding the surge. To that end, Legislate Health, Legislate submitted a request, um, which is uh, the um, spreadsheet, for 1% of the funds that will be received by the town of Groton from the American Rescue Plan Act funds. And that 1% is equivalent to $85,878 and 80, 94 cents. So um, at this time, I, I would like to ask Mr. Mansfield if he could give us a little background on this. And uh, since, you know, most of us on this um, body have, have not, um, are just hearing about this in the last day. I'm happy to. Uh, good evening, everyone. And thanks for the opportunity to let me speak to you regarding uh, this request for a portion of the Groton American Rescue Plan funding. Um, I know this was short notice, uh, so I appreciate you um, giving me this opportunity. As most of you know, Legislate Health District is the municipal health department for the town of Groton, uh, per Connecticut state statute. Um, and as I mentioned in my correspondence to Mr. Pert, health districts across Connecticut did not receive a dedicated rescue plan funding stream um, in this funding stream, but we were instead expected to reach out to our member municipalities to request a portion of that funding. And that's similar to what was done with the coronavirus funding stream last year. Um, with that funding stream, our municipalities contributed um, a percentage of their total allocation. I believe it was 10% off the top of my head. Um, with this rescue plan allocation, we're asking each of our municipalities to contribute 1% of the total funding. For the town of Groton, as uh, Ms. Moderator said, uh, it's just under $86,000. I have spoken with all of our municipalities. Um, two of those municipalities have already allocated that 1% funding and all but one have verbally concurred uh, with the proposal that we put forward. Um, 
Much Light Health District thanks you for your consideration. And um, I know you have both the spreadsheet and, uh, and my request, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Mansfield? Um, Representative Flax. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just want to say, I, I have a question for you, Steve. Um, first of all, I apologize for voting no because I, I didn't realize it was for you. And uh, the work that Ledge Light Health District does is um, extremely important and very helpful to the whole community. So um, I apologize for that. Um, is this, does it have to be voted on tonight because of the time frame? Uh, if that question is for me, Mr. Flax, uh, no, uh, there isn't um, uh, a pressing need for this um, this to be voted on this evening. I think the sooner the better, of course, the sooner that we can get the funds into our um, coffers, uh, the sooner we can utilize them to uh, pay for the items that are allowable uh, under the rescue plan. But no, there, from my perspective, there is no need. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Representative Fortner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just wanted to share with the body that I had the opportunity, my husband, uh, who's a, a veterinarian, and I had the opportunity to work with Ledge Light Health District uh, in a volunteer capacity, helping to distribute vaccinations. And I just, I hope, I think all of, I'm hoping all of us know and feel the same way that this is an extremely well-run organization that I'm proud to be a part of, that I'm proud that Groton is a part of, that I'm proud to uh, be able to support them as much as we possibly can at this time. Um, I don't think there's probably a health, health district in this state that's done a better job, and I'm proud to be a part of it, and I hope we can all get behind supporting this um, financial contribution to Ledge Like Health District. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Chase. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, so I see that you have a, um, a nurse in this budget. How, how is that going to be sustainable with this temporary money? Uh, that's a great question. So we made the decision, I made the decision and my board supported it to hire an, an additional public health nurse. We actually recruited and uh, just hired someone who will be starting next month. Um, this is before we became aware of this funding stream. So however we needed to pay for that, we were going to do it, uh, whether it was out of our core funding, if we had to dip into our designated fund balance, which is essentially our rainy day fund. Um, we found that during the pandemic, um, having um, public health nurses on our staff uh, is an incredibly good idea. And we uh, saw that as a deficiency because we only had two. Um, so we very much want to have a third. That is our plan. And when this funding stream came along, and that was an allowable expense, um, we thought it was a perfect fit. So there's no restrictions on your regular budgetary money that it's okay to supplant money if you get extra from some other? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. So you're, you said you hired this nurse and you're paying for her salary or his salary from another uh, funding stream. So I know that if you get federal dollars, you can't supplant that, you know what I mean? You have to use the money for what it's intended, but you can use, you can supplant money. Yes, with this funding stream, it is an allowable expense. Okay. And to be clear, we, uh, she hasn't started yet. So um, even if it wasn't, we wouldn't be supplanting um, because uh, she's not currently an employee. Just happened to happen that way. Okay, so I, did listen to your presentation um, at the town council. So I'm well aware of all the ins and outs of this whole request. But if this body would rather have it go to committee is waiting another month for you to receive this money a hardship. It is not a hardship. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Representative Richards. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just wanted to comment that um, I 
think it's been noticed by myself and, and others that it's harder to get a COVID test right now. And I wondered if you could just speak to that and say exactly how this money would be helping us as we gear up for opening schools again. Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, as many of you may or may not know, uh, at the height of the pandemic, um, testing was a priority. Um, once the focus um, switched to vaccinating people, so did the federal funds. So essentially the federal funds for testing people went away, therefore the programs went away. So all those testing sites that you saw, all the free testing sites that you saw uh, essentially evaporated. Um, and then obviously with the, uh, the introduction of the variants and the Delta variant, um, and municipalities and some businesses requiring their employees to be tested if they're not vaccinated, there's uh, much more of a need for that testing. So um, we have been working with the Connecticut Department of Public Health and we actually just recently entered into an agreement with Semaphore. Um, Semaphore set up a clinic last week, their first clinic in the city of New London to provide testing to as many people as needed. Um, I believe we had about 30 people on Friday, um, we're in the process of scheduling another clinic in Groton, in the city of Groton. Um, we haven't uh, figured out all the details on that yet, but yeah, testing is definitely an issue. There are a lot of testing sites out there if you have insurance and if you have funds. If you don't, they're few and far between. Um, so we're working with some of four right now to, uh, we'll have at least two testing sites weekly within our jurisdiction. And obviously this funding will um, help to support that. Um, and whatever we need to do to, uh, to assist our municipalities with making sure that everybody who needs a test or wants to test uh, has one available to them. Thank you for responding to that. And just want to state as well that I would be supporting um, putting this money forward tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Is it Sean Powers or Kristen? It's John, thank you. Uh, Steve, we'd like to, from our family, we'd like to thank you so much for your hard work and all the things you've done through COVID. And it's been a difficult time for you and your staff. So whatever funding you need, I believe, needs to be given to you as soon as possible. But more importantly, you know, I, I, I read the back of the list here as to the things that are going, that it's supposed to go to the funding. And all of those things need immediate attention and you know, We'll be supporting whatever you need, you know, any kind of relief you can give the hospital workers like my wife and the nurses. <clears throat> you do all this work so that we're kept up to speed from an RTM point of view. We're in, we're in support of it tonight so that you have it as soon as possible in case it isn't there later on. So I say we expedite it. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Representative Jones. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, and I echo um, Representative Fortner and, and Representative Powers' comments on Ledgelight. Mine's just a question on looking at the spreadsheet. Um, looks like it spreads out from FY22 all the way to FY25. Um, is that, am I reading that correctly, that there's money that comes out over a period of four years? That's correct. Uh, and that is based on the schedule of, of the money that's distributed to our municipalities. Um, if I could just explain the spreadsheet a little bit um, when we put it together, I, I thought there was a little void, but it was kind of hard to um, to indicate in the spreadsheet. So uh, I'm looking at it right now. If you look in column one, FY22, you'll see that public health nurse salary and fringe, um, it, there's nothing in that right now. Um, that's because we're not going to be utilizing any of that money for that individual um, until FY23. Um, as far as the other two that uh, are not spread out over those years, uh, the 40,000 for the mass vaccination vehicle, which I would like to elaborate on just a little bit, and the support for community members to isolate and quarantine, um, we're going to use that money as needed over that time frame. So whether or not the town of Groton decides to, uh, if they decide, uh, and if this group decides that they wanted to support Ledgelight with 1% of the funding, whether or not they do it uh, as the money comes in, or they do it in a, in a lump at the beginning, um, it's really all the same to us. Um, so yes, the, the money will be spent over that uh, over those years that are shown on the spreadsheet. And is that 1% of the total amount that you're getting or is it 1% each year? I'm just trying to understand where the 1% comes from being that it's spread over four years. 
Yeah, it is 1% over the entire period of time. So the sum okay. total for our request for Groton is 85,878.94. Okay, terrific. All right, great. And thank you. Thank you for everything and, and all that you've done through all of COVID. So it's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, a question as well. Um, I'm curious about um, tracking of breakthrough infections. Is my understanding that the CDC stopped really monitoring breakthrough infections in May uh, and really didn't do a very good job testing for variants of the virus. Maybe they've stepped it up. And so I was wondering um, what your role or what Ledge Light's role will be uh, in um, monitoring breakthrough infections and also you know, providing us with information on variants. So we don't have a direct role in uh, anything to do with tracking variants. That's a role of the epidemiology department at the State Department of Public Health. Um, I'm not sure what federal information you're referring to, Ms. Moderator, but um, uh, the Connecticut Department of Public Health is the entity that is tracking um, breakout cases in the state of Connecticut. Um, and they do provide that data uh, in their weekly report, which um, will come out tomorrow. Okay, and so you're providing us with that information. I don't think I've seen it yet, but maybe I've missed it. Yeah, each Thursday afternoon, I forward uh, the report that's specific to Ledge Light Health District, along with links to all of the uh, Department of Public Health data, and that information is in there. Okay, yeah, I've definitely seen the reports, and they've been very helpful um, tracking infections and, and deaths um, in this community and in the neighboring communities. I just haven't seen anything about those variants, so thank you. I will look for sure. that. Um, are there any other questions? And I would just want to remind the body that we do not have a motion on the floor. So if anyone would like to um, make a motion, uh, that resolution was sent to us this morning. It's a resolution to approve funding from the Town of Groton's American Rescue Plan funds to the Ledgeide Health District. If you'd like to make that motion, I believe you should read the entire resolution. Would anyone like to put a motion on the floor? Bailey would like to make a motion. Representative Bailey, will you please read the resolution then in its entirety? Uh, um, I'm having difficulty trying to find that email. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe, that's fine. Does someone else have uh, is able to make the motion? We'll, we'll relieve you if someone else is willing to make the motion. It does need to be read into the record. Madam moderator, I didn't receive it either. I don't I don't know if anybody else did. Um, Having problems trying to find it. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can email it to everyone. That could be. Um, uh, Madam clerk, could you send it to everyone? I don't have an easy way of sending it to people. Well, let me see. I, I have it. I can, I can send it to, I think um, you sent it to Representative Gauthier, who's not on the line. I've got it up, but I'm trying to get, get this to go to all 32. But let me at least let me send it to um, Bailey. And <laughs> you can. You have it. Can, Emma, can we just put it on the screen? Yeah, I, 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 I'm using my phone. I'm not. I don't have. I'm not hooked into my uh, town email on my computer because then I wouldn't be able to do the Zoom. It's, Kind of silly, but it's the way it works. I just sent it to some of you, and I can keep sending it out. Sorry, I just I don't have like a, a way to 
I don't have like a group in my personal email for everyone. So I sent it to Representative Bailey and, and a few other members. I, I'll try to keep sending it. I, I just sent it to Harry Watson. <laughs> In a file. I have it. Can I read it? This is Cindy For Representative Fortner. Yeah, read, read it. <laughs> no, don't just read it, but make a motion, please. Right. <laughs> I'm, uh, I move to. Um, I mean, to support the resolution to approve funding from the Town of Groton's American Rescue Plan funds to the Ledge Light Health District. Whereas Ledge Light Health District has been leading COVID mitigation and response efforts in the Town of Groton, and whereas the Town of Groton is experiencing increased COVID infection numbers due to the proliferations of the Delta variant and Whereas Ledge Light Health District is in need of increased funding in order to combat the virus. And whereas Ledge Light Health District has requested each of their member municipalities to contribute 1% of the American Rescue Plan Act funding to be received by each of those municipalities. And whereas 1% of the Gro Town of Groton's ARPA funding is 85,000. $878.94 now be it resolved that Town of Groton approves $85,878.94 from its ARPA funding for the Ledge Light Health District and hereby recommends the referral to the RTM under 3.5.3 for approval. So moved. Second. Bailey, second. Thank you. I, so we have a motion on the floor from Representative Fortner, and it's been seconded by Representative Bailey. Is there any discussion on this uh, motion? Representative Adams, I see your hand is up. Yeah, my, uh, I was going to see about referring this to committee since there is no urgency to pass this today. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Are you making an amendment to that motion? Mm, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess my amendment is that, that I'd like to see it referred to committee for discussion before we vote. Madam Clerk, is that an amendment that can be tagged on to the motion? I don't think you can tag it on. I, I think it's a completely different motion. So, you know, you, you, it's not an amendment. In other words, you have a motion to approve this. So I he wants to make a motion to refer to the committee. So it's, they don't really go together. Let's have the, the debate on this motion. And then certainly if it fails, that would be an appropriate motion to bring before this group. Um, Representative Jones. Um, I just, when, when Representative Fortner was reading it, I think she did it. She said under RTM under 3.5.3 and it's actually under 6.5. Point three. Reading the resolution, the last line. Sorry. I just wondered if that affected anything. Just make sure we correct it in the record. That's our. That's the rule in our in the RTM rules. So that's correct. Thank you, Representative Jones, for that clarification. Yep. Uh, Representative Dean Shinbrot. Hi. I don't mean to be a stick in the mug, but I would like to see this referred to the committee just to follow procedure. I'm, I'm big on procedure. I think since it's not an emergency to get the money allocated tonight, I would really prefer to see it go to committee. Thank you. Representative Fortner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I, I respect um, Counts, um, Representative Dean Schimbrot's um, uh, um, what she has spoken. However, um, if the most of the body is in favor of this, I don't understand why we would need to hold it up. 
Um, seems like this is a something that has a tremendous amount of support in our community. So I don't, either way, we can debate it or not, but I think it's going to go through and I'd prefer that it go through tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Representative um, Washington. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I know because I like the item to committee. Um, they didn't say in their um, information that they sent that it was important and that, that we needed to rush it through. So I didn't understand why we were rushing it through tonight. And so I agree with uh, Representative Adams and Dean Schimbrock that uh, go to committee like everything else, there's no rush and it could be discussed in committee and then come back to them. I'm not saying I'm against it, but um, there's no rush, so why not go through committee like it's supposed to? Okay, thank I would, thank you, Representative Washington. I just wanted to address that, which is that that 6.5.3, which Representative um, Jones uh, corrected, uh, was put in by the town council. And what 6.5.3 focuses on is when uh, matters are referred to committee between RTM meetings. Uh, and must be announced at the subsequent meeting at the at the RTM, and when they don't have um, at least seven days uh, before the meeting. Um, so they were uh, asking for, for this. Um, oh, sorry, there was, Patrice wants us to speak. There was. They were. Um, oh, the can you speak to voting tonight? Yes. Excuse me. Can I have the floor? Thank you. I'm getting That's confused by, by the. <laughs> the things that are happening to my screen. Um, so that's what that 6.5.3 is basically referring to the rules of the RTM. So while I recognize that Representative Dean Shinbrot likes to follow procedure, there's actually a procedure in our rules for addressing uh, items that come without being able to go to committee. And this body has, has done this many times. Uh, so it's, it's not a, an extraordinary circumstance, I would say. Um, but that being as it may, we do have Representative Richards wishes to speak. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I just wanted to express my support for um, approving this this evening. I think we have all the information that we need to have, and we have the money. It's simply putting it towards its purpose, and it's certainly a worthy purpose. So I will be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Chase. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Mr. Mansfield, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a rule, barring COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID, each uh, health district gets money from the towns anyway to function, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and have you received money from Grattan uh, from the other pots of COVID money that we've received? Uh, yes, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I believe we received 10% of the funds. Uh, in, I believe it was last November. I don't have that in front of me, but that's my recollection. Yeah, each one of our municipalities contributed about 10% of their COVID relief funds last November. Okay, as a rule, I am a stickler like Representative Dean Shinbra and Representative Washington. I go by the rules. However, I've seen your presentation already. I understand where the money comes from, where you get your money from, and eventually you're gonna get it anyway. So I, um, I will be voting yes for this tonight. Thank you. Um, I would just ask folks who've spoken to lower their hand. I believe Representative Cassieri is next. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I would also like to express my support tonight um, with school starting soon, with the in increases in cases with the Delta variant, it is truly important for us to support Ledgley after they've supported us through this pandemic. As Madam Moderator just stated, we are following the rules by voting yes tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other, uh, Representative Bailey? Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, I request to to put this to a roll call vote, is that possible? 
Yes, we can have a roll call vote when we get to that moment when the debate okay. starts. Right. Thank you. Um, and is there, but I'm seeing no other hands raised. So we do have a motion on the floor and maybe this time to have that roll call vote. Um, the motion is, I'm sorry, I have to zip back to my handy dandy PDF, it is a resolution to approve funding from the Town of Broughton's American Rescue Plan funds to the Ledgelight Health District, <clears throat> transferring 1% of the ARPA funds that this town has received in the amount of $85,878.94. We have the motion, which was made um, by Representative Fortner and seconded by Representative Bailey. Um, Madam Clerk, could you lead us in a roll call vote, please? Thank you. Uh, yes, no, or abstain, please. Adams? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Baker? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Casper? Yes. Larry? Yes. Case? Yes. Cop? Yes. Rocket Hubbard? Yes. Dean Chinbrot? Yes. Fitzgerald? Yes. Blacks? Yes. Fortner? Yes. Gustafson? Yes. Ainline? Yes. Hanscom? Yes. Jacome? Yes. Jones? Yes. Horace Kristen? Yes. Power Sean? Yes. Richards? Yes. Jason Rusk? Rusk, Jason? Yes. Rusk, Jill? Yes. Starkley? Yes. Stevenson? Yes. Oops. Yes. Oops. Oops. Let me get that 25. Thomas? Yes. Washington? Yes. Watson? Yes. Wells? Yes. White House? Yes. Whitney? Yes. Evan? Yes. 32, that's unanimous. Okay, thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Mansfield, for coming uh, tonight and for all that you and your organization has done for God. Um, I know we all appreciate it, so thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I uh, appreciate your time. And um, I've actually got six minutes to get to my next Zoom. So um, thank you very much for moving me up on the agenda, or, or at least that, that I was at the front of the agenda. I very much appreciate it. Everyone have a great night. All right, thank you. The next item on our agenda is economic development. I believe uh, Mr. Reiner's here. Did you want to give a brief report or, or a, a for that? Excuse me, Madam Moderator, before you move on, um, I just want to explain to the body that I was given the impression that, that, that this was something that was supposed to be on the agenda for this evening by the town manager. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, maybe he got the impression also because we did a, a committee of the whole and a cow, uh, council meeting back to back to, to, to move this last night. So it, it, it seemed like an urgent thing to us. And so I apologize that it wasn't. Thank you. So is Mr. Reiner with us? Hi, uh, John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. Uh, I, I am uh, present tonight. I did not have anything to report in regards to economic development. If folks have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Um, the next item is a report from the Superintendent of Schools. I don't know if Superintendent Austin is here. I thought she might be planning to come actually. I don't see her. Okay. Um, then the next items are our liaison reports. Um, and because I know that Representative Chase has probably heard the most recent report from Superintendent Austin, let us start with that report, please. Um, Representative Chase, would you like to give the liaison report? Yes. Um, I have two of them since we didn't meet last month. Do you want me to read both of them? Um, you know, I think it's the August one. Yeah, I would read, read the most recent, just, uh, you know, if there's any highlights from the first one that haven't already happened. 
that's fine, but uh, you know, mostly things that are, you know, timely. Um, so I will read one of the things from July because it's kind of important. They, they uh, did a TransFinder bus route audit um, that was in progress at that time. This was July. The software company helped support this work within the time frame to do a two-tier system with the middle and high schools coming in together a little before 740 for high school and 745 for middle school. They will leave at different times in the afternoon, however, so there'll be plenty of time to get the magnet schools rolling, which was um, the catalyst so the young children wouldn't have to be on the buses for long periods of time. Uh, the BOE won't add, have to add on buses, in fact, might be saving some buses in the future. And they were hiring three positions, an IT director, a Fitch High School music teacher, and a band director, and campus athletic director for the high school and middle school. Um, they had leftover funds uh, from one fiscal year to the next. All right, so August is um, negotiations have finished with, finished with secretaries, tech support, and custodians waiting for that body to okay it. Teachers will be in at the end of August, and the two new elementary schools will be opening on schedule. The treehouse is going to include the middle school. Information will go out to parents on August 6th, and the applications are due through the 20th of August. District Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Book Club met and discussed the book, The Culturally Responsible Teaching and the Brain. They had the opening of the Dr. Michael Grenier Library at the Grattan Middle School, and funds from ARP ESSER are being used to infiltrate the kids with the best they can be given in the next couple of years to make sure they don't have gaps and accelerate their learning with academic renewal. And there have been summer camps for K through five in STEM literacy and math with embedded coaching for teachers. Did you want me to read the other entities, the other um, bodies to the sure. town council? Please, yeah. Right. The town council um, accepted approval of a grant for DCF Youth Services and Youth Services Bureau Enhancement Grant. Documents were signed to become sister cities with Kingston, Jamaica, the Grattan Town, Grattan City, and New London. And more open space has been accepted in the Maple Glen subdivision. City council report, current concerts are in the park are ongoing. The farmer's market is on Tuesdays from 3 to 6 p.m. Catch basins are being worked on as well as sidewalks. Grattan City Day is August 6, 2021. Grattan Heights Open House on August 7th. Food distribution at St. John's Church will be on 8-24 and 8-27. Commemoration of the 240th anniversary of the Battle of the Fort Griswold will be on September 4th and 5th. They're having a Grattan City Brew Run uh, on September 12th, and LED lights are being installed at Washington Park. Uh, STEPS program, Summer Leadership College Career Enrichment Program for Young Women is ending in about a week and working on economic development on Thames Street and uh, they adjourned at 5 56 p.m. Thank you so much, Representative Chase. And that was uh, emailed out to people today by the uh, Madam Clerk. So, um, Representative Rusk, do you have anything from the Economic Development Commission? Representative Rusk? I think we may have just lost Representative Rusk. I'm sorry, we just got booted off and back on. Um, I, we had a family emergency that night. I wasn't able to make the meeting. Thank you. All right. Um, Representative Cassieri, do you have a, a report from the town council? I saw that you had, uh, that we were sent one. So if you wanted to make it brief, that must be fine. You just give the highlights. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. I'll read everything that Representative Chase didn't cover. The uh, town council met virtually for the regular town council meeting on August 3rd at 6.30 p.m. The town council reappointed Susan Sutherland to the Planning and Zoning Commission. The council approved 2021-558 town manager's performance review, um, and they updated his contract uh, for a year. The council also approved 2021-438 police union collective bargaining agreement. That contract is from July 1st. 
2020 to June 30th, 2023. We also approved the United Steelworkers Collective Bargaining Agreement 2020 to 2022. That contract is covered for July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2022. Um, and the council approved Zero Riverview Avenue 2021-3962. Um, Riverview Avenue has historically been used by Town of Groton as public parking, but ownership of the property has been brought into question. The town council places great value on retention of its coastal access and therefore has authorized the town manager and the director of public works to preserve the town's rights in the disputed area of Riverview Avenue, including the right to pursue a legal remedy. The next regular town council meeting is scheduled for September 7th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Representative Wells, did you have a golf advisory committee meeting? Patrick. Uh, I met with uh, the golf advisory board, the most met on June 21st. <clears throat> and we had, we had the, the last revenue report that we have is the May revenue report. I don't want to hear rare. No rare. No rare. Mm -hmm. no rare. Oh. Anyway, last revenue report was the uh, May revenue report. And uh, it turned out to be record revenue. It was 18% greater than the, the fiscal year today. Revenue was 18% greater than the uh, previous fiscal year in May. And it was also a record year with 60% greater than the average of the four year period. These are in fact I've described as incredible numbers. We now have close to 350 members compared to 227 this time last year and up 300, from 313 at the end of 2020. And of course, it's busy every day, all day from open to close. The former one to 3 p.m. slack time is no more. It's busy all the time. And before uh, I sort of advise us, before we cast greedy eyes on their fund balance, it's important to remember that $150,000 fund balance uh, that they had a year or two ago, a couple of years ago, was wiped out in a year of bad weather, especially bad weather on weekends. This uncertainty leaves them reluctant to spend down the balance until they absolutely have to. Most recently, they've had to replace a real mower sharpener for which they could no longer get parts. It cost $73,000. And contrary to suggestions during our budget deliberations, golf carts and riding warmer are not in the town's vehicle list, fleet list. A mailing, will, let's see where, along with the revenue burst, we face a record increase in Facebook lights in our first quarter and now have 1,539 users who follow the course, which apparently reaches some 10,000. These uh, followers have a reach of 10,770 uh, because they share it with their friends. Mm. Estimated cost $20,000 for a consultant to discuss the uh, prepare an application to place the course on the national, state national historic preservation reservoirs would likely be done as the CIP. A grant from the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development would pay for half. So the estimate is it would actually be somewhere between 16 and 20, and so the cost of the town would be eight to 10,000. However, it's a uh, the way they handle the CIPs is if the town manager goes to the Parks and Rec and said, these are our CIPs, choose. They'll never choose the uh, economic development, the, uh, the putting the course on the national road because they have too many other things that are undone. So it's just not going to happen that way. The only way it's going to happen is if the council does it and or we could do it as a as a as an initiative. But, Anyway, but not if you go and ask the uh, parks and rec director to pick CIPs, he's not going to pick this one. He's going to pick another one. The course has published its best management practices. 
based on a template from the state chapter, <clears throat> chapter of the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. The stakeholder uh, review team is an impressive collection of analysts from DEP, UConn based at Chris, and our own golf superintendent, Eric Morrison. Eric has tailored the over 200 page document to Sean Cossack. And it's about what we do, how, and why. And for those who may be disappointed that he's not giving an hour long environmental presentation of the RPM, the document will appear on our web, it has showed up on our website, now available on the course website. And I think that uh, that does it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Wells. At this point, we have uh, the Trails Advisory Committee. Representative Jones, you, oh, Representative Fortner, I see your hand is raised. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, Representative Wells, do you have actually any information on what the fund balance currently is uh, or, or was in May um, for the golf, um, for Shinnecasa uh, Golf Club? Thank you. No, we won't have that. That, oops. that won't be available until the, uh, well, it'll be available now. It'll come from uh, from our finance folks, and that wasn't available when I prepared the report. But we will know next meeting. Thank you, um, Representative Jones. Did you have a, a report? Yes, I do. Uh, this is from the June seventeenth um, trails meeting. Um, President were Mark Berry, Joan Smith, Sidney Van Zandt, Tom Olson, Bray Rafferty, uh, Jolene Anderson, Bruce Loughran, and Denise Desham. Desch I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, citizen petition, there was none. Correspondence, none. Uh, individual reports, Avalonia, Jolene Anderson talked about a, a webinar series, Right Trees, Right Time. Uh, they talked about new trail map, boundary maps are almost finished and a butter to the Moore Woodlands property has planted bamboo and it's crept over into the preserve. Uh, they've been sent a letter. It's illegal to plant bamboo in the state of Connecticut. Uh, Avalonia closed on the Sheets family forest property. And it's a half mile of new open space. Uh, invasive species manuals being prepared. And there are some coyote sightings along the trail and some of these trails have not been marked. On the cop property, Mark Berry talked about uh, the Steve Fagan article in the in the day of the on the Cop family farm, it's another hidden gem in Groton, and I put the link in the uh, report. Uh, there's a discussion on wayfinding signage on the property. Someone reported getting lost. Uh, the main trails are well marked, and they could have just wandered off the main trail. Uh, the Crosstown Trail. Mark Berry talked about the new pedestrian bridge over Fishtown Brook is under construction. Money is coming from the Mystic River Magnet School construction project. Uh, this fills in the gap of the trail and a ribbon cutting should happen uh, in September. Um, Sound and, and Country Magazine by the day has an article on the Crosstown Trail coming out shortly. Uh, Groton Open Space, Joan Smith opened up about the sheep farm south entrance uh, has begun. A lot of knotweed is being cleared out. Uh, the trail is now open. We'll also be opening up the road on the Fort Hill side that sort of comes out um, where um, uh, that walkway from the new middle school is. Uh, Gosa also has bamboo on this property. Uh, Gosa is partnering with the town of Groton on the Watrous property behind the Bel Air development. Gosa is giving financial support, and working on a management plan. The property includes the Eccleston Brook watershed and some outstanding vernal pools. There's also a historic area going back to the Pequot Wars. Uh, the town trails, Mark Berry talked about the Connecticut Trail Finders website and three Groton properties that are on the site, BB Pond, uh, Towns End and Woodland. The goal is to get all the trails on the uh, Connecticut Trail site. Mark submitted a grant application to the Southeast Con uh, Council of Governance for updating the bike and pedestrian master plan that was done last in 2004. Groton and Norwich have been selected. Uh, hopefully their proposals will be funded. The plan calls for a budget of $150,000 with Groton responsible for 10% of it or 15,000. Uh, Tritown Trails, Bray Robinson talked about the Tritown Trail South met with Kim Williams of Deep and Mike Dyer of the Bluff Point State Park. Um, they have come to some consensus on signage. Um, Mike Berry is also letting a sign on the Pequot River Walkway, uh, meeting coming up in, in June with Groton Utilities. Um, the Cop property is also allowing the town, the Tritown to connect with their trails in the future. Uh, they have a new website. 
uh, tritowntrail.com. Uh, they're working with the Connecticut Forest and Park and adding a sign connecting Tritown Trails and the Pequot Trail um, by the end of July. So that should have happened. Um, unfinished business, none. And then the new business was discussing uh, the discussion on switching the name from a task force to a full committee. Uh, originally, the original charter has expired. The Trails Task Force has been around for eight or nine years. It should have become a committee or, or stay as a task force. Uh, Sydney Van Zandt likes the task force because it means things change and grow. Nothing is constant. Task force names allow for different kinds of tasks to happen. Uh, Joan Smith asked if the workload is about the same. Committees have a little more stuff to do. Um, likes that She likes the task force. Mark Berry valued the meetings, also likes the task force name. Task force is less rigid than a committee. Uh, Jolene likes the current format also. Consensus of the group is keeping the task force. Mark will approach the council with updates. Uh, and then there was a brief discussion on the power bikes and the pump trail. Uh, they have actually raised $30,000 of the $60,000 has been raised so far. Um, the next meeting is September 16th and will probably be at the new bridge um, at the Fishtown Brook. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you. That was very informative. Um, so at this point, I just want to put out a call again <laughs> for a education a Board of Ed uh, liaison. We do not have... Um, a liaison since uh, Representative Fitzgerald stepped down and it would be fabulous if someone would like to, um, who is very interested in uh, perhaps um, Board of Ed activities would take that on. So you can contact me offline, that would be great. Uh, now we launch into our committee reports and the first um, item I wanted to just uh, ask the Clerk, is if we could get J1 removed from our agenda, the Civilian Oversight Research Committee which yes, I, I noticed it. I noticed it today. And again, this program that we have is just horrendous to use. And so, you know, I work my best to try to take things off, but I don't make the agendas typically. If I had, I would have yanked it out of there. Sorry. Okay. No, no problem. I see that Representative Gothier is not there. And we did have um, uh, a meeting of that committee. Um, I don't know if there's any member of the committee who would like to read the minutes into the record and and we could address the advertising for the student liaison to the RTM. I could read the minutes if I think I have them up. So would that work, uh, Madam Clerk? If no one absolutely, talks. absolutely. Okay, let me see if I can find them real quick. Maybe they're, they were attached. I think we're in the right room. I'm sorry, I was looking for my digital ones. All right, so I. So the meeting was held on January 28th. Can I, that doesn't seem like the right. Time for this meeting. You know, I'm confused because this meeting should have occurred in June, and I'm not sure why the minutes say January 28th. So that's one thing that should be changed. <laughs> okay, but she made she made have uh, used an old template or something. Let me see what I have okay. in my. Oh, this is from Re Representative Luck. I mean, Chair Luck. So this is an old minute that's in my back. It probably goes with, she. there were two meetings. Oh, okay. I, didn't find it. I, I don't know, if, I don't think it got included, unfortunately, in my packet. Madam Moderator, I have them right here if you want me to okay. read them in. Please, that would be fabuloso. No problem. Scary. Uh, the meeting occurred Wednesday, June 30th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Meeting was called to order at 6, 10 p.m. Representatives present were Baker, Bailey, Hainline, and Chair Gothier. Chair Gothier reviewed the student participant flyer that will be provided to schools and town to inform students, teachers, and parents about the RTM student participant role available. Gothier noted that she needed to change some wording to remain consistent with town attorney advice. No other members had comments or recommendations. 
Chair Gauthier reviewed a draft application form that would also be distributed and asked for feedback. She noted that she will also put the document into a Word file in addition to the Google form in order to make it more accessible for those without Google accounts. Chair Gauthier went through a list of individuals and organizations to contact to spread the word about the position. Those identified include Groton Board of Education to describe, I'm sorry, to distribute on school notice boards, online social and email platforms, principals and or guidance counselors, Town of Groton for purposes of distributing to town notice boards, online social and email platforms, City of Groton for purposes of distributing to city notice boards, online social and email platforms, the Marine Magnet Science High School, and the Grasso Tech High School. Chair Gauthier will be listed as the point person or contact for applications to be returned to and will set a deadline for applications to be submitted. The meeting adjourned at 6.22 p.m. We have minutes. Would you like to make a motion to approve that? I'm going to make a motion to approve the, the meeting minutes. Um, Second, Adams. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the uh, Community and Economic Development Committee held on June 30th, 2021. Uh, is there any changes or corrections that need to be made? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. And I just would note that Representative Hainline left at 8.47, so she did not vote. So we must be at 31 on that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I see that in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So it doesn't seem that there's a motion embedded in those minutes, is there? It's more of an update, am I correct? Representative Cassieri? I do not see one, Madam Moderator. Okay, perfect. So we will move on and then it sounds like that committee will be, community development and, and, and services um, will be meeting again uh, to um, maybe develop that advertising and get it out so we can get our liaison uh, liaisons on board. Thank you. Uh, the next um, item is, I believe the education uh, committee met to um, approve the receipt of a grant that the Board of Ed just received. Chair Whitney, would you like to um, lead us in your minutes, please? Yes, I'll, I'll read the minutes. And uh, before I do, I'll say that the minutes include our recommendation where we've got the motion, but I think I think I have to read through the whole minutes first and then um, move that motion later, uh, unless you just want me to do it once. So, so what I would ask you to, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. So the, yeah. um, well, It's so descriptive, it seems like it should be read and then continue on with it. Yeah, you could read the whole thing in your minutes and then for the motion, perhaps just read the resolution title. Would that work, Madam? I'd love to do that. That'd be yes, great. That's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right. These are the minutes from the special meeting of the RTM Education Committee meeting. And that was on uh, yesterday, Tuesday, August 10th, 2021. The meeting was scheduled for 6.30. It was called to order at 6.36. This was a virtual meeting via Zoom. Uh, Representatives Whitney, Chase, Fitzgerald, Frickman, and Gauthier were present. Representative Gustafson, Ray, Stevenson, and Thomas were absent. Quorum was established at 6.41 p.m. Also in attendance, Representative Washington and Jacome, Superintendent Austin, and Linda Allen from LEARN. Our main item was new business. There's one item. It was 2021-437-3, Children First Groton Collaborative Grant-2021. Motion by Representative Whitney is, we recommend the resolution authorizing the superintendent of schools to execute the contract between the Connecticut Council for, for Philanthropy and Groton Public Schools to receive grant funding in the amount of $35,000. Whereas Children First Groton and School Readiness Council were recently awarded grant funding in the amount of $35,000 from the Connecticut Early Childhood Funder Collaborative. And whereas the grant will assist in focusing on the expansion of the Children First Groton and School Readiness Council Collaborative Leadership Group 
to be more diverse and broaden the representation reflected of the community. And whereas by successfully partnering with underrepresented groups such as parents, military families, and faith-based members, along with increasing the number of residents participating, Children First Groton and School Readiness Council will strengthen the effectiveness, depth, and scope of the work, resulting in a collaborative that represents the diverse population of Groton. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town council authorizes the superintendent of schools, Susan Austin, to execute the contract agreement between the Connecticut Council for Philanthropy as the fiscal sponsor for the Connecticut Early Childhood Funder Collaborative and the Groton Public Schools as the fiscal sponsor for the Children First Groton School Readiness Council Collaborative and to receive the grant funding in the amount of $35,000. That motion was seconded by Representative Fitzgerald. It was discussed and it passed five in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. Susan Austin and Linda Allen from Learn described the nature of the grant and answered questions by committee members. Groton Public Schools acts as the fiduciary for this grant. It provides in-kind services, namely business office support to oversee the grant, but is not directly funded by the grant. Through this grant, the Children First Groton School Readiness Council Collaborative provides additional preschool opportunities for children in the community and supports parent outreach efforts. Children First Groton was established by the Graustein Memorial Fund, but that funding ended several years ago. The School Readiness Council was established through state legislation. This grant is a continuation of a prior grant. Grant reporting requirements for the earlier this year have been met. This year's grant activities have a particular focus on parent voice to find out what families need and how to support them. An outreach coordinator will participate in diversity, equity, and inclusion events. An itemized grant budget is provided in the meeting documentation. This is the same information the town council viewed. Grant funds must be spent by the end of this year. Currently, there is no funding for sustaining the grant related efforts beyond this year, but future funding opportunities may arise. Participants are aware this is a limited term effort. There is no commitment of future resources or activities by Groton Public Schools beyond the grant period. The meeting was adjourned at 7.09 p.m. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the RTM Education Committee. Second, Chase. Thank, Thank you. We have a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, Education Committee. I believe that was August 11th, no, August 10th, uh, made by Representative Whitney and seconded by Representative Chase. Uh, is there any discussion or corrections to be made to those minutes? All right, seeing none, uh, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor of approving the minutes of the Education Committee of August um, 10th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, those minutes are approved. Would you like to put a motion on the floor, Chair Whitney? Yes. I would like to make a motion authorizing 2021-437-3 Children First Grant Collaborative Grant-2021. Is there a second? Second, Jones. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor uh, to approve the, let me put this thing. <laughs> The Children First Groton Collaborative Grant for 2021 made by Representative Whitney, seconded by Representative Jones. Is there any discussion on that? Representative Fortner. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, Representative Whitney, I'm still, we discussed this a little bit and I'm still not exactly clear on a, what this grant is gonna fund. I obviously have no opposition to accepting a grant. I'm not really sure what exactly it's going to fund. I understand it doesn't go to the Board of Ed, that it's a pass through fiduciary agreement. But what I was reading and what you read, it's still unclear to me what this $35,000 will do. Is it actually going to support a position or a part, maybe a, 
uh, a person who's there and maybe is going to be spending some time uh, trying to facilitate encouraging a parent's voice. I, from reading it, I got the impression that it was trying to have a more inclusive um, collaborative. So can you easily explain to me really what the money is going to be used for? Thank you so much. Um, well, I'll give it a try. I'll go to the <laughs> budget they included uh, for the grant, but I, but I think actually in the meeting, uh, because this was a continuation grant or is a continuation grant, that uh, part of the activities they're discovering, they're discussing are what they're already doing now. And then under the first grant and this new $35,000 or $35,000 grant is, has specific activities that add on to what they're already doing. So uh, what I see this, this grant as being is that parent focus grant uh, is outreach and parent involvement. And so with that, I'll, I'll look at the, just go through the budget. It's actually uh, reasonably short and I'm not gonna read the number, the dollar values, but it does add up to $35,000. Uh, in personnel, there's an administrative assistant uh, included. Um, and actually that's uh, just give you a rough estimate. That's one of the biggest expenditures at $6,000. And that administrative assistant is someone uh, the, who works for Children First Grant. There's also a collaborative program manager and an outreach coordinator. These are not support of full positions, it's just um, hourly rates dedicated to the project. And then there's the CFG chair, which must be the Children First Grant chair. So those are the people involved. Um, I know that the administrative assistant and the CFG chair are for Children First Grant. Uh, I don't know who, who the collaborative program manager or outreach coordinator work for, if they're independent or not, that was part wasn't clear to me, but they, they don't work for the town of Groton, Groton Public Schools, I know that. Uh, so that was, that's the personnel part and that subtotal came up to $18,000. And then the next part was operational expenses. There's in for travel, uh, equipment and, and fees for Zooms and things like that, um, office supplies. Uh, but also along with this, this operational expenses, uh, they are funding parent ambassadors and also neighborhood parent leaders. And this is where that uh, outreach coupled with um, a parent input uh, really comes in. And there are two parent ambassadors and three neighborhood leaders, parent leaders. And then also uh, learn school readiness liaison is included in that as well. Uh, and then the, the last part is um, they have neighborhood group supplies uh, and then focus groups and night meetings, uh, just supplies related to that. And then uh, um, data consultants and, and that adds up to the, the rest of the budget. So uh, all the budget to me looks like it's connected to this outreach and engagement of parents to get their perspective that for this current grant. And then the, it's a continuation of another grant where they were um, talking about providing um, opportunity, additional pre-K opportunities for um, 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 students in the community, children in the community. So okay. Okay. it's him. Thank you, Representative Whitney. Thank you so much. That makes it much more clear. I couldn't really figure out what it was for, you've made it very clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Representative um, Bailey, I think you had your hand up. Uh, thank you very much. I, I just got uh, two questions uh, for uh, Representative Whitney. Um, well, one of them is uh, C CQI training. What, what does CQI stand for? Oh, I, I see that there, the CQI training. I'm not sure. I'll see if I can find that. Ask your other question. Or, or if it, if anything, just to, you know, uh, take note of it, and then uh, you could let us know in an email or something like that, or something. I guess somehow. All right. I'll see if I can look for it. But yeah, and, another. And, yeah, yep. Okay. And. Um, the other question is, well, it's not really a question, but it's 
under budgeted expenses. I noticed that the, uh, the uh, fiduciary person is uh, lined out for that amount. And um, it still equals the same thing without rebudgeting it across the budgeted expenses in total. Do you, do you see that? Can you point to where that is? Is that in the- um, It's the, in the that, budget? it's in, uh, under budgeted expenses. So there's uh, four, Four thousand eight hundred dollars. That's not accounted for. Are, and you're reading attachment A budget in the applicant. It's it's under the budget uh, uh, expenses where the fiduciary is. Uh, Representative Whitney, he's looking at a different budget than what you are. The budget he's looking at has other town and um, agency funds in it. It's a different one than what you're looking at. Yeah, I'm wondering, um, is this, what does it say on the top of the page that that can help me get to the right page? Um, oh, I, I see it. I, I, I see the, the page. Yeah, I'm trying and, to find it myself, but it, because it's in an email with all the, I got and, this computer doing too many things. And then if you see that line, it, it, it has like parentheses 400 overhead for CFA fiduciary 12% and that's hashed out. Yes. Okay. So that's part of, this was confusing to us in the meeting uh, initially, but that budget is, the children first Groton budget, um, not the grant budget. This is their operating budget uh, for the period uh, July 1st of this year to June 30th of, of next year. And actually, if you, you go up to the, the top of that budget, you'll see contributions from the city of Groton for $1,000 and then uh, the town of Groton for 5,000, which we approved as part of our budget process this year. So that's not, uh, this, this is their, the Children First Groton budget, uh, and it's it's germane to how Children First Groton operates, uh, but it, it's not directly related to the grant budget. That comes later um, in that in that document, and that's um, on the top of that page. It's a one pager. It has attachment A budget, and the title is Applicant Children First Groton slash School Readiness Council. So the whether or not that fiduciary um, line is in there in the Children First Groton budget um, is, isn't relevant to the grant we're discussing, though we thought initially that budget was, but it isn't. Okay, I, I'm just noting that there's an accounting discrepancy with that, that's all. Right, but it's not, it's not with the grant budget, it's with the Children First Groton budget. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry, I was on mute, Representative Chase. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Moderator. If I could add to the response of the question for Representative Fortner, um, there are two things I'd like to read, they're very short. The purpose of this grant is to strengthen the organizational capacity of children first Groton slash school readiness council to, to enable it to build a local early childhood birth to age five system and their scope of services is the purpose is to strengthen the organizational capacity of Children First Groton School Readiness Council to enable it to build a local early childhood birth to age five system in accordance with their proposed, uh, their, in accordance with the proposal submitted. So it, it's, um, it's a, a program for childhood birth to um, age five. And they do outreach like um, Representative Whitney said. Thank you. I don't see any other hands raised. So 
Uh, I just have, um, I, th I think uh, Representative Powers uh, pointed out that CQI most likely uh, means continuous quality improvement. And that that's used in educational context, but it, it wasn't spelled out in the document anywhere that I saw. Thank you. I wanna note that Representative Flax is left the meeting. So we are at 30 members, I believe. Um, and uh, there are no more questions. So, and no more hands raised. So we have a motion on the floor uh, for the children to approve the resolution for the Children First Rotten Collaborative Grant for the receipt of that grant by the Board of Ed. Um, all in favor of that, please say aye. 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 Hey, uh, Hi. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that uh, motion passes. Thank you very much, Chair Whitney. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is uh, with finance. They had um, the approval of purchase and sales agreement for the Wolfbrook property. Uh, Chair Washington, would you like to take us through your minutes? Okay, thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, the Finance Committee meeting was called to order at 6.33 p.m. on Monday, August 9th, 2021 by Chairperson Washington. The meeting was held via Zoom. In attendance were representatives Kathy Chase, Bruce Flax, Clarence Casper, Sean Powers, and Chase Foster. Also in attendance were Town Manager John Burt, and Director of Planning and Development Services, Jonathan Reiner. Absent was Representative Roseanne Katowski. Unfinished business, none. New business, 2021-141-7, land acquisition, approval of purchase and sales agreement for Wolf Brook property. Representative Powers made a motion to recommend approval of the purchase of the Wolf Brook property to the full RTN and to have the town manager sign all necessary documents to close on the property. Seconded by Representative Flax. Discussion. John Reiner stated that the size of the Wolf Brook property is approximately 161 acres. It is located off of No Ain't Legit Road. In the past, this property was approved for age restricted development which did not move forward. The original price of the property was $1.1 million. Property owner reached out to the town to purchase the property. The owner's original sale price to the town was $880,000. The town successfully negotiated a sale price of $800,000. $800,000 is the cost of the land. Closing costs and other fees are not included in the $800,000. Uh, the town was able to purchase this property, property significantly below appraised value. Property is going to be used for passive recreation, hiking, trails, no ball fields. There are a lot of wetlands on the property. This is a significant piece of property in respect to its historical, ecological, and recreational value. Wolfbrook property is unique in what it has to offer and a great asset to the town. Town manager Burt stated that the town would not have considered purchasing the property otherwise. How will we pay for this property? The town applied for and was awarded a Connecticut DEEP open space and watershed grant in the amount of $352,000 for open space acquisition. Groton Open Space Association will contribute, it, will contribute $210,000. The town of Groton will contribute, contribute um, $220,000 towards the purchase price of the property. $74,000 from fund balance in the open space fund and $146,000 from capital reserve unassigned balance that will be transferred to the open space fund. The remaining amount of $18,000 will be contributed by fundraising and additional grants. 
Um, the state of Connecticut has applied for other grants on behalf of the town. Purchase and sales agreement is contingent upon getting all the approvals at local level, making sure all things are done correctly for the DEEP grant and town council and RTM approval. Mr. Ryan has stated that they hope to close on this property prior to the end of this calendar year. If RTM approves the sale, town staff still needs to get a survey updated, finalize a conservation easement, get bids for environmental assessment and site work completed. Representative Flax asked who dictates the use of the land. The response was that the grant restricts what you can do and can't do. Um, the town will establish an oversight committee, which would include the town manager, parks and recreation director, and others. Um, the Groton Open Space Association will also want to have some say. Representative Foster is concerned that the west side of town does not have enough green space. The town got rid of a lot of school property on the west side of town. What is the long-term plan to have more open space on the west side of town? What is the long-term strategy to spread out more green space in, in town? Town manager Burt responded that they just received a donation of 20.5 acres of property north of North Pleasant Valley Road. The town council will be addressing what, can, what they can do to balance green space better. It is a priority. Representative Powers stated that the west side of town is in a tough location to gather open space. Development of vacant school properties was needed. Vote to approve motion. Representative Flax, Chase, Powers, Casper, and Washington opposed Representative Forster. Representative Forster stated that his constituents are concerned because the town is selling school property to become apartment complexes on one hand and buying property on the other hand for open space. Again, need a long-term goal in regard to open space. Representative Powell's responded that there's only so much area on the west side of town because of federally owned land. Representative Chase asked if more fundraising is raised than $18,000, would that reduce the town's share? The response was that GOSA, the Groton Open Space, the Groton Open Space Association and town will have to work that out. Still need to pay closing costs and other fees. If a, if a significant amount of money is raised, the town's portion of the price could be reduced. If we receive the $150,000 NORCA grant award, that would reduce our $220,000. Representative Chase asked if the land is worth $1.1 million, why sell for $800,000 to town? Um, Representative Chase suggested that a map be shown to the RTM that depicts current open space in town. Um, oh, something's missing. Okay. Okay, something was less, left out of my original minutes. So I apologize. Um, Mr. Reiner responded that the yellow book appraisal was $880,000. Price was negotiated. Uh, property owners saw the benefit in the preservation of the property, which the town will do. Town very appreciative that the property owner is willing to sell property to the town below appraised value. The land will always remain open space, never develop. Uh, consideration of committee referral items as per referral list, none adjournment. Motion to adjourn was made by Representative Powers, seconded by Representative Chase. The vote was unanimous for adjournment. Chair Washington adjourned the meeting at 7.14. PM. Oh, nothing was left out of the minutes. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Chair Washington, um, is it uh, let's uh, is that a point of order or can we have a motion get put on the floor by uh, Chair Washington? Madam yeah. Moderator, may I interject? Sure. 
Uh, there was something left out. If you'd like me to read it, Rep. Oh, well, let's um, Washington. I I think maybe the thing to do is to put make a motion to put that on the floor and second it, and then have you amend that in that discussion. Okay. Does that seem okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Um, is there? Do you have a motion to put that on the floor, Chair Washington? Yes, I make a motion to accept the minutes of the Finance Committee um dated august 9th 2021 is there a second 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 powers okay we have a motion made by uh representative washington and seconded by representative sean powers um representative chase would you like to um address your comments make your comments yes i'd like to make an amendment to those minutes yeah sure um gotta find the space now sorry i had to get out of it um so representative chase asked if the land was worth 1.1 million why sell it for 800,000 in town mr reiner responded that the yellow book appraisal was 880,000 price was negotiated property owners saw the benefit in the preservation of the property which the town will do town is very appreciative that the property owner is willing to sell property to town below appraised value the land will always remain open space never developed Thank you. I think I read that. Mm. I didn't. I didn't hear about the yellow book appraisal. I, I don't think. I think you. You said the question. I'm reading your minutes that you sent in the email, and I think when it was, um, when it was retyped, that part was missing. But you had it in your original minutes that you sent out. Thank you. Um, are there any other uh, corrections or discussion on that? All right, seeing none, um, we have a motion on the floor to approve the uh, Finance Committee minutes from um, August 9th, made by Chair Washington and seconded by Representative Sean Powers and um, amended by um, Representative Chase. Uh, all in favor of those minutes as amended, whether they're, oh, Representative Bailey, I see your hand is raised. Uh, yes, uh, I just recommend, uh, request a roll call vote, please. A roll call on the minutes approval? Yes, please. A minutes approval? Oh, I thought uh, for a roll call vote when it goes to a vote. All right. If this is a vote on the minutes of the Finance Committee of their August 9th meeting. We have 28 men members. Okay, thank you. Do you want to roll call on that? Is that, I'm a little confused. Representative Bailey? Uh, no, not, not on the minutes, but okay, for the... Sure. All right, we have a motion to approve the minutes on the floor made by Representative Washington, seconded by Representative Sean Powers, all in favor of those minutes as amended Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, those uh, minutes are approved. Chair Washington, would you like to put a motion on the floor? Yes, I will. Um, I make a motion to recommend the approval of the purchase of the Wolfbrook property and to have the town manager sign all necessary documents to close on the property. Second, Fortner. Thank you. We have a motion uh, to approve the purchase and sales agreement for the Wolf Book property made by Chair, by Representative Washington and seconded by Representative Fortner. Uh, is there any discussion? Representative Baker? Yes. Um, she originally said that there was a map available to show us where that property is. Can, is that map available to us now? Or what's the story on that, Representative Washington? We asked um, John Reiner when he came tonight if he could bring a map and show the open space, what open space is available in the town and where open space is. 
Um, I don't know if he did that or not. So um, maybe the moderator can ask Mr. Reiner if he wants to contribute anything to the, um, you know, to the motion. Mr. Reiner. Okay, you thank you. Did you have anything, a map to share with us for the distribution of open space? Uh, good evening, everyone. John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. Uh, we do have a map. Uh, unfortunately, I'm having some computer issues um, with my work computer, so I was not able to boot it up tonight to do a screen share with that map. Uh, there is a map in the town's plan of conservation and development, which does um, show all of our open space uh, across the town. Some of the conversation that we had at the meeting on Monday night uh, was in regards to depending on how open space is defined. So back in the 2016 uh, Town of Groton Plan of Conservation and Development, the POCD, we had uh, come up, or the consulting firm that had done the work for us, Malone and McBroom, that 21% of the land area in Groton is considered open space or recreation area. Um, that included the Groton Utilities land within that calculation. Again, that was done back in about 2016. Uh, working with staff now to update that map and that number uh, percentage wise. Again, this property is located on um, No Ink Ledger Road. And I believe a map was actually included in the packet of uh, information that was sent to everybody regarding this property to show specifically where this property was along No Ink Ledger Road. It's on the uh, western side of the road. Is it down from next to where the new school is? The new uh, elementary school. Um, I where Carl believe... Butler used to that's be. That's on Fishtown Road. Yeah. But that's, okay. So this is north of Route 1 then? Correct, this is north of Route 1. Okay. May I ask a question real quick? Um, just sure. maybe the clarification in, in regards to um, we're at Whittles Farm Market. So that's on the um, Northwest side of 95. Is it that far down? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding uh, from a are you asking if it's near Whittles? Well, yeah, Whittles is, um, you can, yeah, yeah. if you go, you know, Whittles is Sandy Hollow, you know, and still on North Noink Road. Is it south of where that, um, uh, trip line place is? So it is, so it's a little bit north of Route 1. Right where uh, No Ink Ledger Road takes um, a big turn, where it straightens okay. back out, it's on the western side of the roadway there, south of Route 95. Yep. So south of, you know, where you come off uh, Sandy Hollow, it's south mm -hmm. of that. Oh, okay. Somebody just put a map up. Oh, thank you. So that right there is the... That is a piece of open space associated with another subdivision just north of that on the west side of the road is where yep. the property is. Okay. Thank you for the screen share. Okay, thank you. That clarifies it. Thank you very much. So does it, does it abut the, the fields of fire? Um, so if, uh, let me see here for a second here. I can't remember if it's a direct abutter to it um, if you pinch that down a little bit, because the Fields of Fire property is part of a little, um, yeah, scroll it down just a tad bit more. Yeah, I believe it does abut the Fields of Fire property. Because Fields of Fire goes right up to 95 there. So is this the, the space that's just, that's that big space below it then? Yes. I would think the fields of fire so, is right where that arrow is right now. So right where that wire, uh, where that arrow was, that is the, nope, not one south of there, one property south. That's fields of fire right there. 
That yeah. is the property in or question up, right there. Or even up above that, where it because I think it abuts 95. Correct. It does so abut 95. Fields, fields of fire. Yes, fields of fire abuts 95, where the cursor, the arrow is over right now on that map, is where the, the property that we have a purchase and sales agreement on, that is the zero no ink load, no ink ledgered road property. Field to fire is to the north, route 95 yeah. is to the north. So it's that whole hunk of property in there. Okay. Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I don't see any more questions, um, but I, I do think some of these equity questions about the distribution of open space are probably something that this body would like to hear about in the future. So thank you. Um, perhaps that you could, you know, fill us in at the next meeting on some of that, on what the plans are to make that more equitable. Mr. Reiner, is that okay? Uh, so I think uh, uh, that's a great suggestion. Something that uh, we talked about at the meeting on Monday night is I think as we start thinking about our next plan of conservation and development and uh, updating our town-wide uh, recreation kind of assessment of where parks and rec land is, that's something we certainly want to look into and how can we identify where our existing open space is, where there are opportunities for other open space or parks and rec land around the town and look at a more equitable uh, distribution of it where possible. It gets very difficult to purchase land in areas that are already highly developed. Um, but happy to have that conversation. I think that's gonna be an ongoing discussion for the town for many years to come. I, I you know, am really curious because we just, uh approved the sale of land off of Route 184 that was contiguous with open space uh, and in the WPRD, in the watershed. Uh, and uh, we sold that. And yet here we are acquiring, you know, spending town tax money to acquire new land. And so mm -hmm. I do think that this is something we need to deal with, why we would sell what looks like a great piece of open space that actually adjoins existing open space that would make a wonderful um, buffer for our watershed uh, and then, you know, purchase in a different area. So I, th I think it's a policy that we really need yeah. to think about how we sell our properties, why we sell our properties and where we sell our properties. Um, yeah. I, I think that that would be a nice presentation for this group to get. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just uh, so it's out there, uh, that piece, particular piece of property on Route 184, the town did acquire that through a tax foreclosure and has had that under option even prior to that piece, the abutting piece of property being uh, donated, I believe, to Avalonia. So the piece of property that is now protected when the town was initially marketing and uh, getting under contract uh, the sale of that property, that uh, large piece of property was not a protected piece of property. It was something that was actually slated for development. But it, but it is in the Water Resource Protection District. It is um, a very, you know, fairly close to the reservoir where the public drinking water supply is. So mm. I think we could. Correct, mm. correct. And, and I believe right now approximately somewhere around, I, I can't remember if the exact number was 48% or 51% of the land in the WRPD. There's a significant amount of that land that is already protected land. And a, a good chunk of that WRPD land um, is in the center and goes into the eastern part of town, whereas a lot of the comments I feel like we've been getting is that we need to protect more land in the western part of town. So these are all great points and great things to discuss because there's great competing interests of having open space and recreation land throughout the town. But then when you look at where the habitat corridors uh, the Water Resource Protection District, other protected areas, it, it really um, it, it complicates the, the, the discussion. And I think it's something that uh, the community as a whole does need to weigh in uh, over time. And I think it's something that's going to take uh, a lot of effort and initiative beyond just, um, you know, a, a couple of meetings here and there. But I, I think it's great to, to start having these conversations and, and putting these discussions out there. Thank you. Representative Baker, did you still have your hand raised? Yes, 
Yes, I did. Um, I was just curious if, uh, Ms. if oh, thank you very much, Madam Moderator, for recognizing me. Uh, if Mr. Reiner knew what, well, you said 21% of the land in Groton is now put aside for open space? Not for put aside for open space, but is um, in the 2016 Plan of Conservation and Development, it looked at land that was protected by Groton Utilities, that is parks and rec land, that is state protected land, town and other protected land. So some of it is recreation land, some of it's protected land, some of it is not protected, but it is open space land. So um, one of the very difficult things within the conservation planning community is how do you define open space? And that is uh, an age old question. It's been being debated for as long as I've been in this profession, which is over 20 years, and it's been going on much longer than I've been in this profession, and it'll continue to go on because many people define open spaces as different things. I was just curious too, as considering a town our size, what would other towns our size, would this be a good amount of space to have, or is there a recommendation for how much space a town should put to open space? Uh, the state recommended goal, I believe, is that 21% of the state should be um, preserved open space okay. or preserved and recreation land. So again, even their recommendation, um, I, I think we'd have to look at exactly how they define what it is that they're recommending be preserved or preserved or recreation land. We have a significant amount of land set aside as protected land and yeah, recreation land. Thought within the town. And then you also have to consider in there how much of our land, there's a lot of wetlands, there's a lot of land that is incredible, which is not protected, except for the laws that protect wetlands. And there's a lot of incredibly difficult to develop land around Groton that if it gets developed, will most likely be developed to a minimal extent because of the amount of rock and ledge. Um, you know, we, we've talked to a number of developers who walk away from properties along Route 184, north of that, north of 95, because of just how expensive it is to actually develop that property. It doesn't make sense financially. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Representative Watson. Yeah, thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, I, a couple questions for John. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'm a open space supporter, but I do have some questions. The, the money is coming from the state for this property. Uh, I did notice there's some, some, some things written about restrictions on the property, hiking, uh, no ball fields, and I think it's in the minutes. Are, are, are there stipulations in the state grant money for that, or is that just what we're saying uh, as far as the proposal votes in town? Uh, so uh, a few things there. One, so we're getting money from this, uh, for this purchase from the state, from, from DEEP. We're getting some money from GOSA, and then there's money from uh, the town. And then we're also working with uh, some groups in town to do some fundraising for the, the remaining funds. Uh, yep. So uh, in addition, we've applied for another grant to get some funding. And if we get that additional funding, that will reduce both the town's contribution and uh, GOSA's contribution. The state of Connecticut requires a conservation easement on the property and this particular property, just in the way it, it is, it's not compatible with active recreation and ball fields. There's a, a significant amount of wetlands on the property and to develop ball fields would be an astronomical price. So this property is really being uh, purchased to be preserved for hiking trails, a more passive use that is um, what working with GOSA and working with DEEP that they're going to be requiring be part of this. The town will retain ownership, but um, as part of the DEEP requirements, that's uh, what we expect. Okay, and then follow up to that. Talk about the western part of town. I'm very familiar with that and the lack of open space over in that part of town. And, you know, we've got, what, 1,500 maybe housing units over there and not much open space for those people to enjoy. they got to go to the other side of town. Uh, and years ago, when you come back and talk to us, I'd like to hear, you know, what you have to say about maybe solving some of that issue. Um, 
I remember years ago, we looked at a piece of property behind uh, Charles Barnum's school called the Perry property. This is really a nice piece of property. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I, I think those folks on that side of town um, deserve some open space to hike on and not have to travel to the other side of town to get to it. Um, they're just as much a part of our community as everybody else. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I would like to hear about plans for the western side of town. I did see something about something about Pleasant Valley property, but it wasn't a very big piece of property. Uh, it, it's not an expansive one like this one is here. Uh, thank you very much, Sam. You're welcome. Thank you, Representative uh, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, yeah, I'd just like to uh, align my comments along with our Representative Watson there. I, I definitely, uh, he, he said what I was already thinking. Um, but um, yeah, so looking at the west side of town and uh, looking at open space in, in the city area. Now, the numbers that you gave, uh, Mr. Reiner, um, those percentages that we currently have, is that just specific to the town of Groton, or does that include the, the section of that is known as the city of Groton? You know, I'd have to go back and look because the plan of conservation and development was done for the town of Groton. And I do not, I don't recall that plan was, uh, all that data was done before I worked for the town. So I, I don't recall off the top of my head if that uh, included city data or not. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the city uh, staff that you know of that would be like, um, that some, could be someone that you would collaborate with, uh, like your department? Uh, yeah, I, you know, they, there's a planner that works for the city that we'd certainly uh, talk with them. I don't know if the city has additional plans for uh, open space within the city or additional recreation land. I think that's something that um, the city certainly could uh, look into doing and, you know, moving forward. I've been working for the town for almost seven years now. This is the first piece of property that we have talked about um, buying for open space uh, in the time that I've been here. So, it, you know, it, again, as our only speaker tonight uh, had brought up, it has incredible habitat value. I think it's a really unique property, also from a historical archaeological perspective. And there were a number of reasons really why we brought this forward for protection. Um, and, and that being a, a major one of them. But, you know, happy to work with people moving forward to look at, um, to try to understand what the needs and the wants are of people around town for additional open space and recreation land, and then figuring out, all right, how do we get there? And how much does it cost to get there? And is there adequate property available to then develop what people want to see, whether it's open space, whether it's additional parks, uh, park and rec land. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reiner. Yeah, I, I definitely would uh, encourage all parties on all sides to to uh, work together and maybe come up with some kind of master plan that would um, have the planning departments of both the city and the town work together to kind of look at an integrated model that that would consider these the percentages of open space uh, throughout the city and the town together and also, you know, consider that the city, I mean, I know this is a town meeting, of course, but, um, you know, just you know, from from your end, I mean, the town does have a, a larger budget and kind of kind of swings a bigger hammer in some ways. Um, the, um, you know, having some sort of master plan and some sort of initiative that reaches out to the city and and I, I'll, I'll send the same comments to, to the city side of things too, but I think it's 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 high time that's a master plan because people on this side of town are kind of living on top of each other. It's a bit of a priority and uh, I, I think it should take, take priority. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Wells. Yes. I, I, I think I, I mentioned this uh, briefly to uh, John Reiner sometime in the past. But uh, you know, I don't think open space is necessarily uh, you know acres of land on the east side of town. You know, a buffer between Mystic and and uh, all the shopping centers. So I'm wondering about uh, any considerations to sort of micro open space here and there, small chunks of land that uh, could break up uh, endless asphalt and paving. 
So there might be, you know, just instead of everything seems to have to have a hiking trail or a ball field on it. Anyway, that, that's all. I'm just thinking of, you know, micro spaces, smaller spaces. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right. Seeing no more, I see some people's hands, but I'm assuming those are leftover hands. So if someone wishes to speak, um, please put your hand up. So we do have a motion on the floor, uh, which is uh, to the uh, land acquisition, the approval of and purchase and sales agreement for Wolf for the Wolf Brook property, excuse me, resolution 2021-141-H. Uh, rep, and the motion was made by chair, um, by Representative Washington and seconded, I believe, by uh, Representative Fortner. And we have a request from Representative Bailey to have a um, roll call vote on this. So, um, Madam Clerk, would you like to lead us in a roll call vote, please? Yes. Uh, please say yes, no, or abstention when I call your name. Adams? Yes. Bailey? Yes. yes. Baker? No. Burrell? Yes. Casper? Yes. Siri? Yes. Chase? Yes. Pop? Oops, excuse me. Uh, Crockett Hubbard? Yes. Dean Shinbrot? Yes. Fitzgerald? Yes. Fortner? Yes. Rickman? Oops. Uh, got, um, Gustafson? Yes. Um, Hanscom? Yes. Uh, Jacome? Yes. Jones? Yes. Uh, Powers? Yes. And the other Powers? Yes. Okay, and Richards? Yes. And the Rusks are not here, are they? No, Star Starkly? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Stevenson? Yes. Ali? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I already yeah. called him. <laughs> Thomas? Uh, yes. Washington? Yes. Watson? Yes. Wells? Yes. White House? Yes. Whitney? Yes. And Evan? Yes. 26 in favor, one opposed? Um, and you've got Representative Cop and Jacome, correct? Uh, Representative Kopp, did I not call you again? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't call you. I'm sorry. Jacome, I did call. Okay. Um, Representative Kopp? I see. I thought she left the meeting. Jackie? Oh. Are you there, Jackie? Representative Foster? See, I see Representative Kopp is not here. Okay. I didn't see her on the list when I went through. Okay, because I know she was missed at the beginning. She was here. She didn't put anything in chat, so maybe she did leave. Um, Not uh, here. Thank you. Well, Representative Foster? Sorry for joining late. Uh, I didn't get called in the vote. Uh -huh. We have another person. Ah, who's this? Re Representative Foster just joined. Oh, hello. How's the baby? <laughs> okay, Foster, how do you vote? No. That's two no's then. Okay. 20, 26 in favor, two opposed. Thank you. All right. I believe that's the, the last thing on that agenda. Um, and we have rules and procedures committee. Uh, Chair Richards, would you like to lead us through those minutes for the procedure for the sale of town property that Representative Foster had put as a referral. Yes, thank you, Madam Moderator. The Rules and Procedures Committee, um, 
read through the notes here. Uh, date, June 23rd, 2021. Location was virtual. Members are Chair Kate Richards and Representatives Karen Adams, David Gothier, Adam Pacino, Joe Burrell, and Michael Whitehouse. Members present were Kate Richards, Karen Adams, Adam Pacino. Members absent, David Gothier, Joe Burrell, Michael Whitehouse. Also in attendance, Town Manager John Burt. The meeting was called to order at, and I'm going to interject here <laughs> that I didn't put in a time. I'm gonna list that as 7.06, if you wouldn't mind um, the town clerk to put in that 7.06 was our beginning time. Okay, thank you. Uh, I meant to go back and review the video and I haven't seen it uploaded. I've looked several times. So if I missed that, please let me know, but that's my best recollection of our start time. Okay, back to the minutes. Um, there was no unfinished business, so the committee began discussion of the referral initiated by RTM uh, Ch Representative Chase Foster at the previous monthly RTM meeting on June 9th, 2021. 2021-455 RTM procedures for the sale of town property that recommends a new rule for the RTM, rule 9.7 sale of town property that is drafted as in addition to town charter, charter section 9.6, the RTM shall not decide on the sale of town owned property without the knowledge of the preferred use and probable sale price. The RTM may discuss sensitive issues in an executive session in compliance with FOIA requirements and by a two thirds vote of the members present and voting at a public meeting. No vote may be taken at an executive session." End quote. Uh, Chair Richards began with a review of the relevant sections of the town charter, uh, section 9.6, and current RTM rules and procedures, section 6.4, 6.4.4, and 9.1, and noted that an email from Representative Foster clarified his reasoning for the referral. That email was shared with the RTM rules and procedures committee, the town manager, and assistant town clerk, Don Mahilly, for the public record. She stated that in a way this proposed rule restricts the RTM by requiring particular information before a vote, and in a way gives the RTM more influence by ensuring a certain level of knowledge to make a more informed decision about the sale, the sale of town property. The draft rule includes an option to go into executive session. The committee did not recall the RTM doing this in the past. Mr. Burt said he already consulted with the town attorney on this issue and the RTM may have a private executive session for a particular reasons, including the one proposed. Chair Richards pointed out that RTM rules must not conflict with the town charter, to which Mr. Burt commented that he also reviewed this with the town attorney and no conflicts were found. Mr. Burt also shared that he and the town staff supported the draft rule. During a discussion of the rule wording and other points of consideration, Rep. Adams stated support for the requirement of the preferred use and probable sale price. She also wants to know the appraised value of the property before a vote. There was debate about whether preferred use, probable use, possible use, or allowed use might be the best wording. Representative Pacino expressed support for the rule and said he was comfortable with the a range given for a probable sale price. Chair Richards noted the different information provided at the RTM votes for the Groton Heights property and recent Pleasant Valley property. The committee narrowed down the options and ultimately made a few alterations to the draft rule to state, uh, quote, rule 9.7, sale of town property. In addition to town charter section 9.6, the RTM shall not decide on the sale of town owned property without the knowledge of the appraised value, preferred and allowed use and probable sale price. The RTM may discuss sensitive issues in an executive session in compliance with FOIA requirements and by a two thirds vote of the members present in voting at a public meeting. No vote may be taken at an executive session. The Rules and Procedures Committee voted to recommend the altered draft rule to the RTM unanimously, 300 vote. There's a motion to adjourn by Adams, second by Pacino, and the meeting adjourned at 7.41 p.m. That concludes the minutes. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Richards. 
Uh, do you would like to make a motion to approve? Yes, I move to approve the minutes of the June 23rd, 2021 Rules and Procedures Committee meeting. Second, Adams. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes of the June 23rd Rules and Procedures Committee meeting made by Representative Richards, seconded by Representative Adams. Uh, is there any discussion? I see Representative Jones has his hand raised. Is this on the minutes? Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's it's on the motion later. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion on the minutes or corrections? All right, seeing none, we have a motion on the floor to approve the rules and procedure minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, those minutes are, are approved. Uh, Representative Richards, would you like to put a motion on the floor? Yes, I would like to make the motion to add to the RTM rules um, as proposed here, and I, I can read it off, um, a new rule 9.7, sale of town property. In addition to town charter section 9.6, the RTM shall not decide on the sale of town owned property without the knowledge of the appraised value preferred and allowed use and probable sale price. The RTM may discuss sensitive issues in an executive session in compliance with FOIA requirements and by a two thirds vote of the members present and voting at a public meeting. No vote may be taken at an executive session. Thank you, is there a second for that? Second, Adams. Thank you. Um, excuse me for just a moment. Um, sure. Madam moderator, um, in the rules, is there, is there a section about how we go about changing rules or, or suggesting to change rules? I think that there's a protocol mm -hmm. that the, if the, the change of rule is introduced and then it's sent to all members and then the next meeting it's voted on. It's my memory, but I have to find it. Okay, I have the rules in front of me. I will check. And I believe rules are anyway, they're a two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, in section, it's in section 6.4.4, .4, when an alteration or amendment of the rule is required during the session of the RTM. Such proposed amendment of the rules will be referred to the Standing Rules Committee for consideration and a recommendation to the ERTM. Any change to the rule requires the same vote as above, and that would be with the temporary. The rules are recommended by the committee, and they shall be adopted by a two-thirds vote of those present and voting with prior notice of the full RTM on this item on the agenda or by a majority vote of the full RTM. So if you have all 41 members, it's just majority. I think that we have we we can move forward with this with a two thirds vote. Is that your interpretation? I think we're good. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I, because it wasn't actually put on the agenda as a change of the rules. It actually is just procedure for sale of property. So <laughs> I, sorry, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm I want to be a stickler on this only because it's your rules, and in years past. We've, we've had problems adopting new rules because oh, so-and-so didn't get the agenda saying we were gonna change rule. So, and it's unfortunate that our rules or our, our agendas are kind of skimpy when it comes to what the agenda items look like. But this, this a particular agenda item does not give you the impression that there's going to be a rule change. It's just a procedure for sale of property. You see what I'm saying? Well, the, the referral actually says procedures for the sale of town property that recommends a new rule to the RTM and it gives the wording to it. So that is saying recommends a new rule to the RTM. Right, so I, I really believe that what you should be doing at this point is discussing that rule. And then the next meeting, the RTM will vote to, to approve the rule. So there's time enough to let everybody know that there's going to be a rule change and this is what the rule change is going to be. 
So you're just presenting it today and it can be discussed. But I don't think you should vote on it today. That's my, that's my suggestion. You can do something else. Um, Madam Clerk, I would just suggest that that rule says when an alteration or amendment of the rules is requested during the session of the RGM. I believe that Representative Foster made that suggestion at the June meeting. So we're at a meeting where it's already gone through committee. The suggestion has already been made, but um, that's how I interpret that. When it's requested during the session of the RTM. So this was requested in June. Right, and this is the first opportunity that this RTM has heard the change proposed. Okay. So it's just my suggestion. If you if you're comfortable, if the body's comfortable uh, voting on this, you, you, you know you own the rules. So <laughs> I, I just um, I just recall how we've uh, uh, changed rules in the past, and it's always been a no. it's, gone to, it's gone to committee, and then it's been presented, and then you, everyone gets it in writing exactly how it's going to look in the minutes. I mean, in the rules, and then it's voted on. But that's what I recall. Okay. See if I can find something. All right. Well, we do have some people who wish to comment on this. So, um, and we do have a motion on the floor, I got to say. So we can, uh, Representative Richards, would you want to withdraw that or should we discuss it? And we can always uh, postpone it till next um, meeting. Point for I'm order. Sorry. I don't know who said that. I'm sorry. Oh, this was Rep. Foster. I'm sorry. I mean, we did this with the liaison. We recommended it, then it went to committee, and then it came back, and then we voted on it. I agree, Representative Foster. And I, I think I'm reading your interpretation in the same way, um, or I'm reading the same as uh, moderator Eben, that it was brought up and then went to committee. And, and now we're at the, the voting point, but I'm okay with waiting too. I don't think it's something that we have to do right now. It, maybe it's just a question of how comfortable the body is in, in feeling ready to vote on this, but maybe we should have some dialogue right now anyways. Yeah, and, I mean, I, I believe it was in the packet, right? Everyone did receive it written in the packet, didn't they? Right. Yes, yes. Yes, everybody received it. Okay. Um, Representative Jones. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, question to, um, through you to Mr. Reiner. I just want to get some assurance from him that um, this new rule doesn't impede or um, sort of get in the way of the planning department uh, or the town making decisions on property? You still have the same flexibility to do all the things you need to do. Is he still here? Or not? It looks like he I, I don't think he's still here. Okay. All right, Never mind. I can respond that in okay. town manager John Burt was in our meeting. He said that he and the town staff had discussed this and did support this and didn't see it as something that, that would be an impediment. So I would assume that that include a discussion with um, the director of economic development and others. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Representative uh, um, Foster, did you still wish to speak again? Uh, yeah, I also had a question for Mr. Reiner, but um, since he's not here, it, it really just came down to um, what actually kicked off the RFP process, if that was just a decision from the town council or if that was just the town staff that made that decision. I don't know if anybody in the meeting can speak to that, but that was my question. I certainly cannot speak to that. I don't know if anyone else can just representative, someone can, Rep 
Well, I can't see your, you can't see who it is, but if you can, please speak to it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, Representative Thomas here. Thank you. Um, okay, so a couple of things. Uh, one, um, from my understanding of the way the whole thing is proceeded here, I think we're good to move forward with a vote on the rules change. Um, two, as far as like what or who on the council initiated the discussion of the RFP process and how that came to be and taking a critical review on the RFP process and how it's formed, that would be Councilor Bordelon, uh, who initiated that, that, that uh, critical line of questioning. And um, honestly, like it doesn't matter to me if this rule change causes a slight impediment to the uh, flexibility of Mr. Reiner and the planning department, because I think they've demonstrated uh, perhaps a little bit too much flexibility in the past. Um, so I think, um, you know, I think it's a good rule change and I think we should move forward with it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I gotta say about that. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Jacome. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Yeah, I just, I concur. I think, uh, you know, it was brought up, went to committee. Yeah, it's for the full RTM. I think we should move forward as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you've spoken, will you please put your hand down? I believe that's all the hands I see raised, um, unless someone wishes to speak again. But I don't see any more. And um, I mean, I have to be honest, my reading of this uh, rule, the rule 6.4.4, is that we are good to vote because it has gone to committee. It was announced in June. Everyone has received a written copy of, of the proposed rule change um, since June 20, you know, since the minutes were distributed, let me say. I'm, so, I'm fine. I just, I just wanted to point it out, that, you know, this is not anything that needs to be going, you know, go on and on about, you guys can just vote on it and get a two thirds of who's here. But I think we only have uh, 26 members here right now. We have 26. 26. Nine? Wait, wait, we keep 26, I think it's 26. We had 30 at the last one. I know, no, we had 29 at the last one. 20, that would have been an easy 20 <laughs> members. 29 at, on the Wolfbrook property. All right, well, we still need, if we have 26, we, I think we only need 19 members, maybe. Um, uh, so let's see, Representative Thomas, did you wish to speak again? Uh, yeah, I guess if, if there's an ambiguity in the rules, would it be um, a safer way to proceed to suspend the rules and then move forward with the rule change? No, I think, I don't feel the need to do that, but. Does okay, no, yeah, got it. Uh, no, I'm, 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 again, I'm, in favor of moving forward as is without suspending the rule change. I just wanted to kind of throw that thought out there, but I, I think we're good to move forward too. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I think let's have a roll call vote since this is a two thirds vote. And uh, this is a, a vote to change the rules to insert new rule 9.7 regarding the sale of town property into the RTM rules. The motion was made by representative uh, Richards and seconded by Representative Adams. And I'll ask the town clerk to lead us in a roll call vote, please. Hey, okay. please answer uh, yes, no, or abstention when I read your name. Adams? Yes. Bailey? Yes. yes. Baker? Might not be here still. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll skip over Baker. Burrell? Yes. Casper? Yes. Jesse Erie? Yes. Chase? Yes. Pop is still not here? Crockett Hubbard? Yes. Dean Chinbrot? Abstain. Uh, Fitzgerald? Yes. Uh, Fortner? Abstain. Uh, Frickman, uh, Foster, Foster? Yes. Gustafson? Representative Gustafson? Okay. Um, Representative Hainline's gone. Hanscom? Yes. 
Jacome? Yes. Jones? Yes. Uh, Kristen Powers? Yes. John Powers? Yes. Richards? Yes. And the Rusks are gone. Uh, Starkly? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, there's no force in working. That's okay. Uh, Stevenson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Washington? Yes. Watson? Yes. Wells? Abstain. Uh, White House? Yes. Whitney? Yes. Evan? Yes. Okay, it's 23 yes and no, zero no's and th three abstentions. So we need 18, I believe, as two thirds. Yes, that's correct. 18 would be two thirds of the present. That motion passes. So we do have a new rule 9.7. And so what I'll need from the rules committee is the exact warning and where it's placed. So I can um, change these rules for you. I had to send that to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me, sorry, a lot of stuff spread out here at this moment. <laughs> um, all right. So we are now down into budget discussions and other business. I did want to just mention, I, I meant to maybe say this under liaison reports. Anyone who's on a committee should, you know, feel welcome to update us, even if I don't call you for one of the official liaison reports. But I do serve on the long-term recovery committee and we have been meeting uh, and uh, we have been meeting specifically about this ARPA funding that we heard about earlier today uh, with um, Mr. Mansfield uh, in the Ledgelight Health District. And so just to give you an update, uh, Groton and I guess, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Reiner has gone because I am not an expert in this. I'm just looking at my notes. Um, but we, we did receive $8.6 million as part of that ARPA um, uh, allocation, and it will be distributed in two tranches. Uh, and there are basically five kind of buckets or areas where you can um, spend that money. Uh, and uh, I know from reading the paper that other communities uh, have been reaching out to the public. And I think that is also going to happen here with um, the group with the uh, the Office of uh, Planning is developing a survey. But at our last meeting, we also had invited um, many of the, the um, external agencies uh, for human services that we do fund in the budget, the ones that we give, you know, $2,500 and $5,000 <laughs> um, in, in, in the budget. And so they did talk about their needs uh, and it was very useful. Um, I don't have the list of the folks. I think some of the folks that were invited, the agencies didn't all attend. And I believe the Economic Development um, Council is also going to be uh, focusing in their discussions on small business needs um, from COVID, the impacts of COVID, and, and maybe talking about um, some needs where that money may be spent. So that's, you know, nothing's been decided except apparently tonight we did decide to give 1% of that uh, 86,000 or so to um, Ledgelite Health District, but I wanted to give you an update on that. And I see Representative Washington has her hand raised. Thank you, Madam Monteveda. Um, several months ago, we made a recommendation to the town council about developing a policy for the unassigned fund balance. Have we heard anything back from them yet? Um, John Burt said he was going to. Um, try to, you know, push them along with that referral, but he's not here tonight. Do we have, do you know anything about that? And can you do anything to see what they're doing with that referral or recommendation, I should say? Yeah, I, I do not know anything about that. And I know they've received it. The mayor has, has told me and I, I don't know, maybe um, the town clerk may have a better understanding of where that might be. I can certainly I email the mayor and ask her. So we would have an update at the next meeting on that. Right, thank you. Because it's been a while. It's been a while <laughs> since we sent that. 
Yes, it has. Representative Foster. Uh, I was just going to state that um, Mr. Burt said that he was going to add the items that we've made recommendations to in the uh, um, his town newsletter that he sends to us every month, including um, the safety issue in front of electric boat. Um, trying to think of the other ones that we've sent uh, recommendations for, uh, but just the status of them for us. Yeah, he did put together a newsletter. And um, to tell you the truth, I looked through it kind of quickly, but I, I was doing, I didn't, I got it kind of later in the day, so I didn't have a chance to thoroughly read it. Did anyone on this, in this body have a chance to see if that was in it? I, I did read it and they're not included. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let me reach out to the mayor and see if, if uh, um, what she's thinking about that. Thank you. Um, Representative Thomas. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, a couple of things. One, um, I, along those, uh, are the ARPA funds, I know that the city and also Grant Long Point did receive some as well. Uh, just to, That's correct. Yep. It's the right, just to, of education. Yep. And um, I believe as far as like the, the whole finance and the, the fund balance concern, like trying to get some action on that, I know that uh, Councillor Bordelon did bring it up a couple times over the past couple months in some town council meetings underneath other business, and uh, there didn't seem to be a lot of traction there with other councillors. So I can, that, that's all I got to share. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other comments on that? That was more of an informational update for you guys. And I don't actually even know when our next meeting is, but I did try to send you I think I sent the, the, I thought I had sent the, the notice of the meeting. Um, you can always, we've been, we met once in person, but the last time was virtual. And I expect meetings to be virtual for a little while until this flare of COVID kind of calms down a little. All right. Are there any other items under other business or budget items that people wish to discuss? Uh, excuse me, uh, Madam Moderator. <laughs> I'll lower my hand now that you I, I interrupted you. Um, two things. What, what, um, what Representative um, Foster is talking about, yeah, yeah, we were supposed to get a manager was supposed to update it on the items that the RTM had written letters uh, and actually sent directly to council for um, questions, you know, about things. And I'll follow up also on that. And I did want to let everybody know there will be a primary, a Democratic primary on September 14th uh, for the town council seats. We have not had a, a, a primary uh, for town council or any municipal office of the town since 1965. So it, actually in 1965, it was a Democratic Town Council primary also, but isn't that isn't that funny? Okay, so that's all I have for you for new good new things. Thank you. All right, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. If oh, Representative Thomas, is this a new hand raise or just? Uh, yeah, just real quick to follow up on that. I, I thank the town clerk for mentioning the primary, and um, could we just get a quick rundown of the polling places? Uh, and their locations for the primary on September 14th? Sure, they're actually everything we used at the last presidential election. So first district is at the library. Second district will be at the Zabirsky House. Third district is at the municipal building. Fourth district will be at Mary Morrison School, elementary school. Fifth, um, fifth district will be at the uh, school administration building. Sixth district will be at S.B. Butler School and seventh district will be at the high school. Great, thank you. And in regards to absentee ballots, when is the deadline to have those uh, submitted? They, um, they won't be available. Uh, it's two weeks before the primaries when they're available and they have to be uh, in the town clerk's office by 8 p.m. on election night. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So um, if someone would like to entertain a motion to adjourn, I would accept it unless there is some other business to bring up. Motion to adjourn. Bailey second. 
Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn made by Representative Adams and seconded by Representative Bailey. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, this meeting is adjourned by unanimous consent. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in September. I do believe that Lend Media Villa from Broughton Utilities may be giving us a presentation then. Please stay safe. Everyone, please wear your masks, especially when you're indoors and crowded areas. And let's try to meet in person sometime this year. Uh, all right, be well.